Hi, everybody. Right. I'm Katrin Rudge. You'll get to find out a little bit more about me. I was in your seat in, what is it, 2010? You guys had that workshop? Yeah. And um, I teach high school, uh, Riverview High School in Sarasota, Florida. And so my principal, well, real quickly, a little background. I could probably speak for the next two days. <laughs> but my high school... Um, had, when I started there, I, my, I have a master's in marine science. I studied at University of Maryland. And I actually, Jeannie Clark, who founded Moat Marine Laboratory, um, she was my professor. So I've always had a love of sharks. I've always had a love of marine science. And when I went to, I moved down here from Maryland uh, in 2001, and it was kind of limited. What can you do in science in Sarasota? So I looked at Moat Marine Laboratory. Um, I thought about maybe doing some teaching. My kids were little. Um, so I said, okay, I'll substitute for a while and just, you know, see where that gets me and see, see what happens. I think I got a real estate license at the same time. It's kind of crazy. Anyhow, so um, options were a little bit limited, what to do with marine science. Um, as soon as I started substituting, I, I taught at elementary, uh, little kids, you know, grabbing your, grabbing your skirt and <laughs> you're like, whoa, what are you touching me for? <laughs> and uh, <so laughs> anyhow, it was kind of an interesting experience. A couple months into it, one of the principals said, oh my gosh, you have a master's in marine science. You're coming to teach high school. I'm like, high school? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I'm terrified of these adult kids, you know, that are crazy. Anyhow, so I did it, a uh, long-term substitute position, loved it, fell in love with it, marine science. It, I didn't teach marine science at the time, but Loved that hands-on, you know, doing experiments, kind of got the kids engaged. Um, it was a great sort of segue into, and then I, you know, had to get certified to teach. And that was, oh my gosh, quite a process because I was taking classes every Saturday. I was the guinea pig of the alternative certification is what it was called at the time. I was the guinea pig, would take classes all day Saturday, do my lesson planning Sunday. Remember, I had a four and six-year-old too, so... I don't even know how I made it those first couple of years. Um, got certified, ended up at Riverview High School. Here's, here's the school. Um, this is a very large high school located on a creek, uh, Philippi Creek in Sarasota. When I went there, one of the first things I noticed, um, I taught at a, a school, a couple of schools before that. Um, but one of the things I noticed, we had 40 kids in marine science. I'm like, what? 40 kids out of 2,600 students were taking marine science. We're on the creek. We're about two miles from Sarasota Bay, which leads out to the Gulf. I'm like, something's really wrong with this. The kids, when I taught the class, had not wanted to have nothing to do with science. These were the kids that didn't want to be in science. And so I took them out. We did stuff outside. We went to the creek. We went to Moat Marine Laboratory. We built reef balls. We did all these cool things. So my principal started noticing, hey, she's really doing a lot with these kids and they're actually interested in what's going on. And she said, could you build a program, like a, a career pathway, I guess is what they called it, uh, circulating around um, marine science? I said, of course. I mean, what other topic or you know, way to teach something where you're teaching chemistry, you're teaching physics, you're teaching math, you're teaching you know, all sorts of things, all sorts of careers wrapped up into one, you know, topic. And so I started a long journey. We decided to go around. This was one of the first places we visited. Um, we visited, um, Dan, what, what's your school? East Bay High School was another place we went to. And we sort of did this whirlwind tour. At the time, um, one of the cool statistics I found out, more fish fly out of Tampa International than people. Really? Wow. Seriously? You know, is that still the case? No. <laughs> I mean, who knows that? And, and even people in this area didn't know that. So that was really cool. So that was sort of our springboard for writing grants. We spent years writing grants. I started in 2004. It was not until, oh, by the way, these are my teammates um, that are helping with the program. This is our fearless leader. Glenn Walker is our assistant principal. Awesome, awesome person. He, he's also a drummer in a band, which is really cool because they have a teacher band we get to hear once a month. So very supportive. Uh, the principal really loved the ideas, loved the idea you know, that we were writing grants. So we spent about six years doing that, and we came up with 
Wait, who knows what these are? <laughs> <laughs> Came up with um, lots and lots of money. I think it was about $250,000 that we raised. Nobody understood exactly what my crazy plan was in my head. I think I had a, a walk on the beach with my husband. Um, maybe the third year we were writing grants and I said, you know what? The kids need this hands-on experience and I wanna have a greenhouse. I wanna have a dock. I wanna have, you know, so all these things had been like in the back of my head, but I didn't know how to make it happen. So I had one of the things I was gonna point out, some of you have come with a teammate, right? So find yourself a partner, two, three teachers that you can really get together and make a plan and think about it in advance. Okay, how are we gonna make this happen? You guys already have much more, you know, sort of a leg up because you're getting equipment. There's, you know, a whole room full and a whole facility full of people that can help. So take advantage of that. Um, the program we have now is actually a destination for up to, we see about 4,000 elementary kids a year. And my advanced students um, teach those elementary kids. So I've passed on the role of teacher to my students after their third year, fourth year at the school. Um, we also grow clownfish. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. When the facility is full, so this is what it's like, the greenhouses you see here on site that you'll see tomorrow. Um, you walk in and it opens up into this big facility. We've got coral reef tanks. We've got actually this, I'll tell you a little bit more about. We have snook that we tag and release in the creek behind the school. Um, we have a mangrove tank system. So anyhow, but the rest is all pictures. So I'm just gonna flash through here. So we kind of set up our mission and we thought it was really important to include the arts. We have a lot of uh, art artists in the Sarasota community. So that was a good idea too. I just realized, am I good with the kit? Am I supposed to be? Like, no, you're, no, you're good. <laughs> you're good. I like to walk around when you're I'm good. in the class. Or so. so yeah, so STEAM is kind of what we like to use because we do like to include the arts and we have a lot of that at our school. Um, so we looked for community partnerships. We actually set up an advisory board um, that we used to meet with quarterly or every half year. Um, these are only a few of the partners. Uh, obviously, the Tropical Aquaculture Lab was a big um, player in the beginning. And Carlos, who has been mentioned a few times, actually came and helped set up some of the crypt systems. <laughs> so we had the, the Carlos crypt system set up in the very beginning. Um, so anyhow, we um, work very closely with Moat Marine Laboratory. Um, New College is also a partner. We do a lot of things with them as well. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about Sarasota Baywatch. Um, this year I've gotten sort of a very closely involved with them. We've always done cleanups and we have a cool relationship now where Sarasota Bay uh, watch is actually dropping two inch clams in Sarasota Bay in order to clear the water. They also feed on red tide, all the planktonic species that are in the, in the water. And we've dumped 500,000 clams in Sarasota Bay. Kind of exciting. So what happens in the aquadome? We actually have a clownfish breeding capability of breeding clownfish. Yes, we have weird morphs of what the clownfish look like. And we're like, how do they get, wait, what's, where's the stripe, you know? and they just look really weird, but I think they're really cool. Um, we do have those for selling. Um, we do have a coral fragging system. And then each of the, as you rotate around the aquadome, there are 10 stations. So I literally have a bell. I'm the kind, kind of the timekeeper at that point when my students are teaching. They're at their station. There are usually three or four of them with you know these elementary kids, 10 of them or so per station. When the station, Rotation happens, I ring a bell and they move on. Uh, we teach things about you know, coral reef ecology, mangrove growth and importance, invertebrate characteristics. We have a little touch tank so we can talk about you know, water vascular system and all that sort of thing. Uh, clownfish breeding, reducing plastics. The students come up with their own projects and ideas and how to demonstrate you know, reducing plastics in the ocean. Um, growth and tagging of our snook. And then we actually had a group of students that at one of the programs at our school requires kids to come up with their own ideas. The IB International Baccalaureate Program requires CAS hours. And so they wanted to build a food forest. I'm like, what's a food forest? <laughs> so they explained it to me. And I thought, wow, that's kind of cool. That would be really neat outside the greenhouse, make it pretty from the road. And so we've added edible plants. Um, you can see the, the different kind, mulberry, 
Uh, lemongrass, banana, bananas, that's really cool too, watching those grow. Uh, sugar cane, papaya. Our newest thing is star fruit. So stars to starfish is the name of the program. Now we're adding star fruit. Fit right in, right? <laughs> Um, student research projects, again, for the IB program. So when these students are in Marine One Science, they then are, well, ninth grade, generally, they take biology, okay? The, their sophomore year, they can take Marine Science One. Then they need to take IB Marine. And then their senior year, they're capable of taking um, and teaching the Stars to Starfish program. So when I say my advanced students, these are the ones they've, they're seniors now and they've had three years of marine science basically, bio and marine science. So these are the ones that are the leaders and it's really interesting because I was walking down the hallway earlier to the bathroom and someone's like, Miss Rudge. I'm like, what? And a student of mine, when we first set up the aqu Aquadome is here working. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a proud moment. I felt very <laughs> happy about that. So. Um, they really have a long list of experiences that they can put on their resume, resume builders, um, and a lot of them get accepted into really cool programs. Um, you kind of see that interaction. That's way more powerful having students teach than um, if I were teaching all these elementary kids that came through. They, they really are, you know, they look up to them. If they see them in the store, they're like, I know you from the Octodome. <laughs> so it's really cute. So the advanced students become the teachers and guides. This kind of shows you a little bit of the pictures. We did start originally with tilapia um, and they were quite hardy. That was true. <laughs> um, they were also quite dirty, got the tanks dirty very quickly. Um, and I really, I wanted something that was, um, you know, and the fact you have to harvest them at some point. So I wanted something that was, um, also improving the environment in Sarasota and giving back sort of to the community. So my partnership with Moat, I thought, well, Snook would be great because we could release them in the creek, you know, if we got the permits. So we're actually under Moat's permits. I don't think most of the time high schools are allowed to release fish out into creeks out in their waters. So we were very lucky to kind of build that relationship. And we start with you know, about one inch fry. I started the first time with almost microscopic fry and I was there eight hours a day feeding live rotifers and food, live food to the, <laughs> I was like the, the worried mom, like feeding these little fish. And so they said, next time, let's get them a little bit bigger. So they're already on the pellet food. Um, so this is what the facility looks like. Here is uh, just a quick little video clip. Let's see if I can get it working. There we go. Those are our little clownfish. The kids just love this. It's just like so cool. And on the bottom right, here are snook. That's actually in their crypt system tank. And they come up and check out the camera and wonder what the heck is that? And then now, this is actually really recent. We have a coral fragging system uh, that's inside the back of our classroom. I was very fortunate because at the time of us planning and writing grants, we were also building a new facility. So the high school was being upgraded and we were able to plan our room to have drains in the floor and a room in the back that had like a wet lab. So I, I know that's, you've got to think outside the box probably mm -hmm. to, to work with the systems you have. Oh, okay. here we go. And then the, this is what our, the back area, the dot, we have a dock. That's another thing. Um, after writing grants for years and getting this facility, someone in the community said, oh my gosh, look at this cool program. I want to support. We had an anonymous donor give us money for a dock and a boat, actually, that was on Philippi Creek. But long story short, the boat, I, could, I had to use my vehicle. I had to maintain the boat. It was a really nice pontoon boat. I could only take five or six kids out without special you know, licensing and being a captain or whatever. And it was only on the weekends. So I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this isn't working out the way I'm supposed to. Why is this always on my shoulder? So, so we ended up donating, or not donating, but we um, like sold the boat, basically, like did a bidding thing and sold the boat. And then the money went back into the program. So I felt bad. But anyhow, so here's the, the Freedom Day. Free, go, be free. Look out for the pelican. <laughs> so they get to go. And then there are 10 stations in the creek. Um, they have little mini surgeries that are going on here. The kids are weighing and measuring. 
and then moat in, in inserts a little tiny transmitter. And when the, the snook go up the creek, there are 10 stations that collect data of where these snook are found. And then the students get to see, you know, a, and kind of analyze that data, which is really cool. Um, so that's a, a fun little project that we're involved in. So another cool thing that we've done, we actually, I connected with um, a, some, some of the scientists at SeaWorld and we were able to get a baby, see a little baby shark moving around up there. So there's an egg yolk. This is a mermaid's purse from a bamboo shark. And then after about this. Last time I had, had an eating within the first 10 minutes. Kind of jumped ahead on me. So this is after, it's hard to see, I just turn, okay. Ignore that second one. I don't know why it turned sideways, but these are the twins now. See how they're developed after about three months? Little shark is developed. There's hardly any yolk. At that point, I found out because I did this a few times that it's probably good to help them come out of that little egg case. If they don't come out quickly in the next few days, they sort of pass on, you know, and that's the that's the problem. And and reality in cap, you know, in non-captivity situations, a lot of them don't survive. So help them out. Like fish. So I put a little slit with a just made a little slit in the side. There we go. And now they're about they're about four or five inches, and they I feed them, uh, you know, basically live, freshly killed shrimp. Head, head, grab the head off. Let some. I let a student do that part. I don't like doing that. And then the still jiggly meat. I had had it on a little skewer, and it ate it. The sharks are now this. We have three of them. They're this big now, and they're almost at the point they reach sexual maturity. It takes a long time. They're like seven years old. None of the eggs are viable at this point so we're hoping they figure out what to do i'm not sure what to do you do have to come up with a plan with a very large tank though so don't just go hatching them and think you can put them in a little tank like that you need i have a big uh, almost 600 gallon tank that they're in okay then hands-on activities in the classroom red tide is a huge topic i start my year off talking about that because the students don't really they've grown up around it they've lived in that area with red tide happening all the time, but they really don't have a good understanding of it. And that's sort of my research background from the University of Maryland. I studied red tide. So I like to kind of start that off, talk about nutrient cycles. I connect, basically the rest of the year connects in with all the topics, ecology, all the different um, subjects that are you know very relevant. And the, the scary, interesting part, often this time of year is when <laughs> it's, big in the news. I don't do that on purpose, but it's a good topic to kind of get them engaged and starting. And, and I can really build the curriculum. We talk about, you know, nutrient uh, runoff, right? Pollution. We have one of those watershed models and um, Darcy comes in from Sarasota Bay Estuary Program and teaches about that. So at the end of the unit, I kind of have them put one fact and one like, you know, solution to red tide. Right, so they'll say like it stinks or whatever, and <laughs> they they get to they wrote on the glass. This was the, the last time I did it. Um, th these are our little clownfish. I just wanted to show you what they look like. They lay eggs on these flower pots, and day seven, which is about right here, you can see the little eye spots. And they, as they're developing, then you take the flower pot out, you trick the parents, put a new flower pot in, and they produce more eggs <laughs> and hatch the eggs. We do a whole unit on microplastics. Um, I'm going to speed things up because I think I'm going too far here. So food forest, this is what it looks like. We also grew tomatoes out back behind the greenhouse in a system that an engineering student developed where it pulls the string, it pulls the plant up vertically. And towards the top, we had lots and lots of tomatoes produce um, lettuce in these grow systems. They weren't going to let us feed the students within the um, I would, I really want to do aquaponics, but there was a concern of, you know, you heard it today already, but I'd like to move things along to the point where we can use the snook water to actually grow plants um, and feed the, the cafeteria. Anyhow, so these are, I'm sorry? You do another one? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got, I, I'd like to get a whole bunch more of that because I've hatched monarchs and that's a really cool tie-in with biology, obviously. And, 
So tomato or um, those are bananas. I have never seen bananas develop, which is pretty cool. Not really too much as a brain science person into plants, but I've learned a lot. We also planted, we have a retention pond that had everything but what was supposed to be in it. <laughs> we had just tons of weeds. So we replanted, wrote another grant did a native plant trail and the students can guide the elementary kids down to our dock and show them all the native plants in that area. Um, and we connected with, uh, we do have a program that is a county program at housed at Riverview where anybody that is a teenager that gets pregnant, they actually have a way to come and take classes and integrate it in with the rest of the high school kids. And then their students are in day or their um, kids are at daycare while they're in classes. So um, people sometimes say, do you guys have a problem at Riverview? But it's the whole county, right? So anybody in the, in the county, we're not just producing babies. And then the teachers give with their kids there too, which is really cool. So we have a, a nice way of, you know, Earth Day, we get to plant plants and they get to show the little kids how to do that. And they come often into what's what we call the octagon. We do lots of field trips. We go to SeaWorld. I get scared with sharks. We go on the Carefree Learner is another uh, high school program that's very close by. We're actually, we're rivals, but we put things aside when it comes to marine science and we use their boat and they come to our facility as well. And they have live wells, um, live aquariums on the boat. Kids get to handle and see what's in Sarasota Bay, um, which is really cool. Moat Marine Laboratory, we go to SeaWorld. We do seining and netting. So lots of opportunities. We also do a lot of community service, cutting down invasive um, plants on islands that are nearby, cleanups. And then these are our, the clam project I was mentioning with Sarasota Baywatch. So we actually um, have students help. We have to weigh, get an average size, average um, population, how many clams are in each of the buckets. And then usually 70 or 80 of these clam bushels. And these are harvested at Pine Island. Um, after growing for about two years, they get to about two, two inch size. They were trying to do it earlier with much smaller clams, but predation is so high. Those little crabs just eat them up, hermit crabs, all the you know, blue crabs and just destroy the, the little baby plants. So they try to grow them much bigger first under some netting, just like what we were seeing, talked about like pine or what's the cedar key, right? That's cedar key. So, um, and then we put them out on these barges. We have volunteers that come with their boats. And then this is really nice because the high school students get their community service hours. And it's really easy. They just have to weigh them, measure them, get on a boat and dump them off the side. And that feels pretty good. And we have four study sites that we are then gonna monitor and check things out over, over the years and get an idea of predation. And we're working with New College and Moat Marine Laboratory along with Sarasota Baywatch. So look for your community partners. That, that's really cool too. I had my advanced kids um, because they've had marine science now three times. Um, I didn't really feel like doing a midterm because they know their stuff at that point. So I said, all right, cool. We're going to do projects. You're going to figure something out that will improve the program. And so these are some of their ideas. And I haven't even talked to you, but I got a crazy idea that I fell in love with silky chickens at Mosquito Control at Sarasota. <laughs> mosquito Control. I'm like, what do you have chickens for? And I guess they test their blood to see if there are any bloodborne diseases from the mosquitoes. So they stick them out there as guinea pigs. And, and uh, anyhow, I fell in love with silky chickens. So we have three silky chickens now on campus. So we beautified their facility. Here's our recycling uh, project. And then we get to have people take their picture, right? Can I make a comment about that? Yeah, yeah. So it seems a little disconnected, the chickens. Yeah. Uh, I was on a, a conference or at a conference and this guy gets on the call and he's like, yeah, so we just wanted to like integrate our entire ag program and his like aquaponic system after the water's filtered runs through their chicken and goat pen oh, to neat. water their animals cool. and then comes back into their system. Wow. And then goes to the plants and everything like that. that is wow, amazing. that's like super integrated. All right, I'll remember that. <laughs> that was really cool. We have, those are our star fruit. Yeah, and they, they've been a welcome addition to the program. But at the end, the kids get to see the little silky chickens and they go free. So. Uh, we also did a huge science fair. Obviously, a lot of kids have to do science projects for IV Marine and 
So we're, we're trying to make it all, you know, integrate with everything. Um, we also, two years ago, because we couldn't do it this year, um, we did a STEM summer camp for all the, you know, either, either teachers, kids, or anybody that signed up. There was a one-week program that we did. Um, so you can see all the hands. These are the chickens. <laughs> and so see they're a big hit. They're holding the chickens, and they're really soft if you touch them. So And they produce really good eggs, too. So we had almost 90 kids um, involved in this and had a, a really good experience. So we'd like to get back to that uh, hopefully this summer. We do that. We also do some shark tagging with New College. Um, some of my select students, I have to be selected because I think I brought one person out one day and she's like, wait a minute, I have to touch that. And then no. she's like, I'm hot and sweaty. I don't like this. I have to be on this boat all day. And I was like, okay, you work with a good choice here. <laughs> I want people like, like her that want to, yeah, exactly, be involved in this. So this is a really, really cool experience. So a few of them have done that. We've also been part of NOSB, National Ocean Science Bowl. Um, we got third place, and I think this year second, and then we're going to go for number one next year. Mm -hmm. This is a lot harder than that, that other contest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I mean, these questions are hard. They're hard for me, and I, you know, they're, they're not easy questions. <laughs> I can attest to that. When I was a PhD student at the USF College of Marine Science over here in St. Pete, I volunteered and worked, and as a PhD student, some of yeah. those questions, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, these are, it's it pretty, intense. It is yeah, intense. it's an it intense day, really so they, they blew off some steam at the end. Academic style competition, <laughs> really, really incredible. Yeah, super fun, so. And then the newest project, we actually just added um, 30 kayaks so that we can have interactive field trips um, with the, hopefully the high school kids teaching again, elementary kids. And I was just on the phone earlier. I found a really cool dock. I don't have a picture here, but there's a, it's called Easy Dock. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but you just, you put your kayak in and there's a bar you can stand on and then you just push yourself yeah. off. So I'm like checking in. I was like, that's what we need. So <laughs> Stay tuned, we'll see what happens because right now we're walking through the muffs to get into the creek. So, um, oh, Pigeon Key, every year I've researched um, trips to the Keys and it's usually very expensive, but Pigeon Key does a very reasonable three day, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And here's the best part, the kids are locked into a five acre island. They can't go anywhere else and try to sneak booze or whatever they try to do. So, <laughs> So once they get on the boat, they're yours. You check them in advance and um, they get to cut, snorkel right around the island. Um, beautiful sunsets. And this is actually the island where they built the uh, connection between um, Miami and the, what's the bottom? Um, yeah, it's all, it's all the way down to Key West. Key West. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's right off of Marathon. So it's, this was the island where the workers that were building the railway would live, and they weren't allowed to have women on the island or booze. Oh, and they, the would, mile bridge. they would, yeah, exactly. They would like use a cannon and shoot the boats that were coming to try to bring Brom or whatever. To the <laughs> it, it's a crazy story. You need to hear the history of the island. It's, it's really fun. So we've done that. Um, we've also done travel outside the U.S., which obviously has not happened in a few years. Um, and that was a real fun experience. We actually uh, rebuilt, we used rebar to attach coral and do a coral restoration project. Um, we've gone to Belize. And for those of you that are not familiar with this, there are a few, I won't name any names, but there are a few companies. If you have six students going on a trip, then you're paid for. Okay, so if you think you can't travel and have money to travel, think of outside the box ways of doing that. So there's some really neat opportunities for teachers as well. I'm looking forward to more things. So big, big takeaway today, um, dream big, find funding, create a team of teachers to work together. And I didn't really spend a lot of time talking about maintenance. Obviously we use student labor um, <laughs> in big ways to keep things going. Um, I do have someone that now works Wednesday through Sunday because I was coming in set Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday to check on the fish. So keep that in mind. You need to have a plan. 
and um, hopefully don't get two greenhouses or whatever that other guy was doing. No, <laughs> too much. <laughs> um, don't let anyone tell you that it can't be done. Look for that grant money. Again, build a team of people that you're working with. Find an advisory board. Find community partners that you can, you know, bounce ideas off of. Come back here and pick Eric's brain and <laughs> everybody else's to see what what can what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, be an advocate for your student. That's really where this is at. The, the students will surprise you. Some of these students, uh, we had our last grant that finally put us over that edge to be able to start construction was um, a state farm youth advisory board selected our students that wrote the grant. Um, they actually, cause we were like, oh gosh, we don't have, we, this deadline's coming up, what do we do? And we sort of had a think tank of students that wrote this grant and we got it. <laughs> they thought it was really cool. So, um, and then create a culture at your school. We have now at each of our water fountains, we have water refilling stations. Um, that again was student driven to kind of, you know, push for recycling and reusing, reducing plastics. So um, they come up with some really cool ideas. They'll, they'll surprise you. Um, so that's pretty much it. Any questions? I'm sorry, I probably went way too long. But. That's okay. He's got the next talk too. So okay. we're just going to have him push everything together. Okay, good. Good. Perfect. Any questions? Sorry, that was a lot. But. Wow. <laughs>